first trip to the future for modern Doctor Who. Welcome to the Time Treadmill, I'm Ron, and these are my sweaty thoughts about Doctor Who. Taken in isolation, The End of the World is not an especially remarkable or interesting story in Doctor Who history. It's a fairly pedestrian concept. The Doctor takes Rose into the distant future of the last day of the Earth on an observation platform watching the final demise of the Earth. Shenanigans ensue. There's a tiny bit of social commentary, what with Cassandra, the last true human, being the concept of plastic surgery and thinness taken to its most absurd degree, with Cassandra literally being a thin sheet of skin and blood vessels with a couple of eyeballs and some lipstick. But beyond that, on the surface, there's not a whole lot going on. The more important thing this story does is introduces the new audience to a couple of key concepts, the most important one here being that Yes, the TARDIS can travel in time and go to the distant future. And yes, there are aliens, and some of them are little and blue. From a budgetary standpoint, this episode was the most expensive of this entire season. It contains more than 100 visual effects shots in under 45 minutes. It was a beast to produce. And it was very important to showrunner Russell T. Davies to showcase the science fiction aspects of this show immediately in order to give the kids in the audience a little bit of whiz-bang and engage them. It's exactly the same remit that Doctor Who had going out of the gate back in 1963. Do science fiction episodes with aliens and ray guns and the whole thing. The other important narrative thing this story does is introduces the notion that the Doctor is not just a Time Lord, but is the last of the Time Lords. It also introduces the concept of the Great Time War, although the war isn't given a name quite yet. Merely the fact that the Doctor is the last of his race, all of his people and his home planet were destroyed in a Great War, and he is all there is traveling around the universe lost and lonely. So, as I say, taken in isolation, the end of the world is not an especially remarkable episode. But taken from a narrative standpoint, and taken from the perspective of bringing back this show to a brand new audience after a decade and a half gone, this is a masterful execution. So that's it for today. Tomorrow, we travel into the past and meet Charles Dickens. I'll see you then.